Bismillah, al salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Assalamu brother and sister Nicole and brother D'Angelo. Welcome. Welcome. How you doing? Doing well. I'm here, brother Mubarak. He said salam to you guys. All right. Um, inshallah, today I'll be talking about um, the prayer. And just to start off, um, we're going to talk about first the P requisites of the prayer. Um, and it has it here on the book that I'm using is. The one I think all of us has this, the make we do in salah. Does everyone have this book? Okay, tell you. So right now I'm on page seven, and I just want to reify the the prerequisites. Um, one is you know like making the prayer on time, and I'm going to just ex expand upon that. Um, so you know we we have the uh, mostly everyone, if not everyone. So I think. So we're just getting started today. This week we'll be doing it. Okay. So um, we, all of us, you know, have the prayer apps, but just want to, you know, talk briefly about actually like the times that um, the prayers are, you know, based on, you know, the sun and things like that. Because you know, before we had all these, um, you know, cell phones and stuff, like they, they used to measure it based on, the, the shadows and and things like that so for Dhuhr um, it is when you know the Sun passes Zenith um, and starts you know d declining from there and typically it's like when your your height is the same um, as your shadows height um, and the preferred time to do that is the preferred time to pray is you know like you know after it comes in but and that, that time is from the Dhuhr time all the way to before Asr starts. Um, and then Asr is when the when when the yellowing of the sun starts and the prayer between that is you could you could pray Asr between then and um, like uh, the bef before sunset. And so for for both um Dhuhr and Asr, according to the Maliki Madhab. Um, so, there's, you guys probably know, like four schools of thought, um, and you know they kind of like just help us um, understand our religion. Um, for Dhuhr and Asr, like it must be completed, or otherwise it will be late um, before sunrise. I mean before sunset. But there's preferred times. Like you, sh you shouldn't just like if for Dhuhr you shouldn't wait till sun or right before sunset and pray it but um, technically it wouldn't be late um, if you pray it before um, that time. And same for Asr as well. Um, and then for, for Maghrib, the preferred time is, um, they say the time that it takes to pray Maghrib um, after its conditions are met. So um, typically it's like, say like, yeah, about like 20 minutes maybe, like after, um, sunset so between like sunset and 20 minutes that was probably the preferred time um, but the time that it must be completed um, is before sunrise and also for Isha um, but the preferred time for it for Isha um, is it's disappearance of the red sky until like the first third of the night that's when the preferred time is, um, but you know one must pray it before dawn. So, um, they just wanted to like briefly go over that. But going back to the prerequisites, you know, um, you must pray it on time and you must have clean clothes. You know, purity in terms of also um, a clean place. You know, you know, with where we're praying, um, and also within ourselves as well. Maybe you should describe them with what you mean by clean clothes. Sure, yeah. Because they make just things just... Y yeah, that's a good point. So, um, yeah, clean clothes as, you know, one without any, like, you know, um, feces or urine, things like that, of course. Um, so I like them. Uh, um, that's Aki, um, Hussein. Hussein? 
So yeah, he's from North Carolina. He's a new Shahada. Oh, okay. MashaAllah. Nice to meet you, brother. Meet you too, bro. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we were just talking about, like, Salah. Um, so, yeah, you, you're right. Um, yeah, so in terms of just being, like, clean, you know, purity from urine, feces, um, and also, like, covering, too. So, you know, for the man and woman. And you uh, yeah. And, uh... He's he right about that, but and also blood. So if you got, if it's like, not if you like cut your fingers, like a little bit of blood, but if you yeah. had a nose bleed and it got all over your shirt, then. Yeah, if you're like leaking, yeah. um, to try to get that settled first before one pray, yeah. And same thing with not just the clothes, but the area where you're praying it. So if it's like, Obviously, you can't pay, pay the bathroom, but if, you, if it was like pee on the floor or feces on the floor or there's a whole bunch of blood or something like that, you need to go somewhere else and pray. You can't pray in there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Before we move on to like the actual prayer, does anyone have questions just on like the prerequisites? Yeah. Prerequisites. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know some of these things we might went over already. Uh, mm -hmm. But the thing is, uh, in terms of the prayer, and uh, it's very important that whatever we do in the prayers in our salah, that we do it from the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, coming from his sunnah. And one of the things, if it hasn't been said, been said. if it hasn't been said, that uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says to pray as you see me pray. Yeah, mm -hmm. to pray as you see me pray. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the reason why these things are important that the brothers are putting here and sharing with our, our brothers and sisters, because on the day of judgment, the first thing that we're gonna be asked about is our prayer. This is according to hadiths and everything. So it's very important to do these things, to make the intentions. I'm sure they went over these things, uh, according to the way the prophet, your takbir, um, I, you know, in terms of when we're starting up the prayer. Mm -hmm. And again, um, these are the very things, but that's why just one of the many reasons why prayer is so important that we have the Prophet Sallallahu to say, pray as you see me pray. This is, th this is the only way to do it. And our intentions, and also, again, that if you realize that on the day of judgment, I'm repeating myself, just think about it how prayer is important because what happens is when we leave this state and go into our graves, that's one of the things we're gonna be uh, questioned upon is the prayer. So it's very, very important. This is no joke. <laughs> yeah. To add on to what he was saying, where I, when I talk, it's like the Muslims, especially like Mushahadas, some people don't understand the weight of what you just said. Alhamdulillah. So some people are, you know how they, some people think it's just a sin? No, like, you're not even a Muslim if you don't pray, because it takes you out to focus on the next one. Two, you can commit all the sins that's out there. Long, you got two of them. Shirk, I said that right, Shirk? Shirk. Sure. Yeah, Shirk, and not perform a Salah is like <laughs> the biggest sin you can commit. You can kill somebody, but, and still, like, and even on that, that's that's how bad it is. Like you could kill somebody, start for law, rape, start for law. That's wrong. All that's wrong. But that not abandoning the law is worse than all that. So that's the the point of you know, what I'm trying to say. Because some people don't really realize it. Like oh, killing this. No, no. You abandoning the law and not performing it is the worst sin you could commit under the faith of Islam. And nobody wants to be a transgressor. When you abandon that salah, you become a great transgressor for shaitan. Oh you? Yeah. I guess stuff. All right. Um, so, so yeah, we, we just went through the prerequisites. Now we're start off with, you know, the, the actual, um, like prayer. So sorry. sorry yeah, I, uh, you want one thing you want to tell? Yeah. Could you, could you just very fast what prerequisites? Yeah, okay. the prerequisites we mentioned. Was first the, the intention, right, um, of you know praying the the salah, um, you know praying on time, um, 
you know, having clean clothes and also being in a state of purity or a state of wudu um, and, you know, being in a, a clean place as well. Yeah. You mind if I add something to what you were saying? Yeah. Okay. And this is a, this is another thing about the Salah. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says everybody, Iman, their faith goes up and down. So when you perform Salah, just know you are not always going to want to do it. You may not always feel it in your heart. You may, you may be tired. You may feel lazy. But that's the trick of the shaitan. Just keep trying to do it. Your heart will feel it again eventually. Even if it's a month, three months, your heart will feel it again. You will feel it <laughs> in the realm. Just continue doing it. That's yeah. all I want to say on yeah. the salah part. Yeah, that, some people, if you don't feel it, they like, I don't want to do it, and they abandon it. Yeah. And if the, your feelings don't matter. Yeah. And one thing I wanted to add, just on the clothing aspect, you know, wearing clean clothes, but also, um, you know, for the men and women, like we're both supposed to be covered, and our our auras or our um, private parts, not just you know actual private parts, but like the we're supposed to be covered is different for the men and women. So um, for the men, we should have at, at minimum between our knees to our shoulders, um, and then for the women, from like head to toe. Um, and it should be, you know, like loose clothings. So, okay, but yeah, so when we're starting a prayer, um, we have the intention. You know, well, first we face the Qibla. The Qibla is, you know, um, the Kaaba. And just depending on where you are, you know, it's gonna be different directions, but you know, everyone here, I think, you know, we're in the US, so we'll be facing, you know, like, you know, east, northeast um, direction. Um, and then, it mentions here having a sutra in front of you. It's essentially just an object to, um, that, you know, no one else will be, like, walking in front of you. So in, in, it says inanimate objects, so you don't want to put, like, a teddy bear or anything, like, in front of you. Um, but, you know, just a structure where, you know, there wouldn't be people going through or disturbing your prayer. Um, and the last thing before we do the takbir al-ihram, which is the, the takbir to like actually start the salah, um, you know, we will have that intention again. Um, so, one, one comment for the sutra. Like yeah. When you're praying with the imam, mm -hmm. like you don't individually put anything in front of yeah. the imam. Yeah, sure. You yeah. should put something in front of him. But in a mosque setting, it's different because you're right. the first person. It's basically to stop people from coming in front of you, right? Yeah. So in, in the mosque setting, masjid setting, the imams usually all the way to the front and, you know, technically no one mm -hmm. passes in front of him. Yeah. So he, w even if you're outside, it's just basically you can put a chair or whatever in that image object, mm -hmm. um, but it's only needed in front of the imam, yeah. not, like in front of everyone else. Yeah. And like even like if you're at home too, you know, like let's say I'm facing the wall, <laughs> you know, yeah. like yeah, you wouldn't really need a sutra. So yeah, it's, it's more for that goes back to intention like making sure that no one you know goes between your prayer all right so um and, and one yeah. last comment for mm -hmm. for what you said uh northeast uh from, for the u.s um i'm pretty sure most of you have some sort of uh app on your phone yeah so you can use the app just make sure it's calibrated correctly yeah, yeah you gotta do not, the because yeah, <laughs> some app like you know you might have two different apps one will be giving you a different direction yeah yeah direction, yeah. So. yeah um but general it, it, within the u.s is northeast yeah 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 sounds good all right um so yeah we'll start off with the takbir to ihram which is the allah um and you know this doesn't mention here the the iqama. I, I guess just mentioning it, it just mentions here the mandatory parts. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. But you know, anyway, I think you know one should learn the the iqama to you know to to recite before one does the takbiratul ihram. But he, with this book, I, I believe it's just going over like the ob the obligatory um, parts of the. Um, we can. Maybe later, yeah, we could do it later on. I think maybe we could go through this, yeah, and then maybe like next few classes we could go over that. Inshallah. Yeah. 
So right now I'm on page nine. Um, yeah, so as, as it says, you know, we'll raise our um, hands near our um, el near our shoulders and ears, um, and then we'll say Allah Akbar, and that begins the prayer. Um, and after that, um, there is a recommended supplication, but yeah. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdika wa tabaraka smu ta'ala jadduka wa la ilaha ghayruka It's a recommended supplication um, And it says, you know, praise and glory to Allah Blessed is your name Exalted is your majesty and glory And there is no God but you um, I would recommend, you know like If one hasn't learned Fatiha And all the obligatory parts Going through that first And then learning, you know, the the um the opening supplication um the dua to istafa um uh, yeah so chime in um mm -hmm. the brother is correct about the talk beer you you make your talk beer and after this uh it's the placing of your hands um you're placing your uh hand uh on your uh, this little difference of opinion you place your left hand over your right hand over your uh chest area or uh, mm -hmm. stomach area is different uh, yeah. yeah you know so it, yeah that's important it's, it's the uh, if I'm not correct you place your uh, I hope I am correct <laughs> you place your left hand over your right hand mm -hmm. uh, right here right I'm right sorry says, yeah. yes yes the brothers just, let, <laughs> just throw that out that was wrong <laughs> you're getting old don't blame me <laughs> and what not they do not he, he said you place your right hand over and uh, also there's hadith for these things too to be followed on that. Uh, that was a bad mistake. That yeah, that would be bidda. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Now we'll go to um, after that it mentions before um, saying fatiha, which is an obligatory part of the the prayer. Um, and we'll get to like you know other verses after the Fatiha. But if one does not recite the Fatiha, then you know their prayer is not valid. They won't, they would have to redo it. Really, all the you know and we're gonna get to the obligatory parts, and I might like list them out. But there's the obligatory parts of the prayer, and there is like the the Sunnah prayers or the meritonious prayers of the um, prayer. And if one misses out on the obligatory or omits it then they must redo their prayer. But if one misses out on, you know, let's say the, the sunnah part, they could do prostration of forgetfulness, and we, we would get to that at the end. Okay, so um, before we continue, any, any questions on things we discussed so far? Yeah, I got a question. So, I, I have so is there any part the the salah or is it just the al fatiha like or would you say it like out loud I would say the surah so if it wasn't the uh, tashahud and let's say I was saying tashahud do I still need to do the sunnah of forgiveness yeah so one should one should you know do do all the sunnahs right and all the obligatory parts but in terms of just like you know the prostration it's like if you forget for example um, let's say you know you're just praying Aisha, right? And you um, yeah, like so. I'll I'll like list out the the obligatory parts of the prayer. Um, so yeah, intention the takbir of al ihram which is what we just said the Allah prayer is like that first Allah Akbar. Um, standing for it if you can, you know, but like, you know, if you're older or, you know, sick, things like that, then there's, you could do other things. Uh, you could sit down or even lay down. Um, the Fatiha, um, the, the Ruku, the bowing, the Sujood, um, the, yeah, prostration, the Sujood, rising from it. Um, also doing it in the, what do you to love? Um, also doing you know the salam like once you're like finished with the prayer, um, and also the the, the shahud as well like the the when you're sitting to before you make um, salam, um, but yeah now it mentions here like the iqama right like that's like 
you know, that's, that's the first thing of, of the 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 sunnah prayer. Or let's say you recited something out loud where it's supposed to be quiet, right? Then you would maybe you, you would do the um, sujud of forgetfulness. Okay, so going back to the beginning, we do the takbir of al ihram We do the takbir of al ihram then um, it says here you would do um, you would say a'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajeem this would be silently um, then you say bismillah rahman rahim and then you start off the fatiha um, you know, and, and brother Talha mentioned too there's some you know differences of opinions on that one if you should say that but I think let's just follow what's in this book so that just keep consistency um, what is the big on saying what um, whether like you say Bismillah out loud or quietly, um, or if you have to say Old be Like you know those kind of things. But um, I think I think we all have this book. I mean, and they're all accepted. Like you know, all these different opinions. But I think we can maybe just pick one and like you know stay consistent to that. So um, yeah, know, let's go with this. Yeah, I know like. Uh, if you're teach a Muslim, going to teach you that way. Yeah. One of the things, uh, just uh, to, to make it a little simple, is that the prayer begins with the takbir and it ends with the tasmi. And everything in between, we try to make it simple according to the sunnah. No. All right. So after that, we recite Fatiha. Which is Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Rahman Rahim, Maliki Yomidin, Ia can Abudu, Ia can Astain, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, Sirat al Ladina and Amta Alehim, Oiril Mahdubi Alehim, Walla Dadlin. Um, so that was, you know, an ob- obligatory part of the prayer, and then after that, we would do, we recite some verses from the Quran. Um, and those will be within the first two rakahs or um, what would you say? What was it? Yeah, units, of u- units of prayer. That's good. Um, so if if a prayer has more than two units of prayer, um, after the you know the this like the second <coughs> one, when you get back up, you you would just say like Fatiha, and that'll be fine. You wouldn't have to um, add. Um, you know, additional verses um, on top of that. So, you know, for Fajr, which is two prayers, we'll do Fatiha, and then we'll add some verses from the Quran, and then, you know, we'll do that unit, and then come back again, and then um, recite Fatiha, and then some other verses as well. Um, and then now for Dhuhr, Asr, and Isha, we would we would do the same thing for the first two, but then the last two we would just have. We would just recite Fatiha, um, and for Maghrib, um, it will be the third unit. We would just recite Fatiha. And you see how important uh, the Fatiha must be uh, said. And um, without the Fatiha, the, the prayer is not really uh, proper. So, the, so anything. And then after the brother was saying, after the uh, Fatiha, you recite another ayah of surah, and you can more or less, if it's from the Quran. Not more or less, but you can pick whatever you want from the uh, Quran. So, yeah. But the Fatiha, as as we said, that uh, even our prophets speak about that, that you must begin all your prayers with the Fatiha. You can't just begin your prayer and say, you know, Bismillah, and then you just pick any ayats you want. You must begin with the Fatiha. And the no, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, and after we recite Fatiha, we say Allah Akbar. Um, and it says here, you, you raise your hands, sim- similar to how we did it for Takbir al Ihram. You raise your hands um, to your shoulders and ears, and then say Allahu Akbar. Um, just according to, I think it's the Hanif. Well, let's just keep humbly. it. Yeah. Is this is Hanbali? Okay, yeah, let's just keep it. Hanafi don't do that. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Um, and then once we are, once we say Allahu Akbar, we will go down um, into what is Riku, which is basically standing like this with your hands on your knees and your back should be straight yeah your back should be straight 
In terms of your back, go back, turn your back. Yeah. In terms of your back being straight, there's a hadith that says that when uh, one of the uh, companions seen the prophet pray and his back was straight, that you can set, it was so straight that the prophet did it, you can put water on top of the back. So this is like, these are the various positions and everything in the Sunnah. You know, it might be a little difficult, but this is yeah. the points of the Salah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and of course, you know, if one is, have medical issues and things like yeah. that, that's like a whole different like story. Yeah. 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 And after we, and so when we are in Ruku, which I just um, performed, we would say, um, Subhana Rabbi Al Azim. Subhana Rabbi Al Azim. Subhana Rabbi Al Azim. So we will say that three times, which essentially um, is translated to Glory is to my Lord, the Almighty. Um, and you'll see too, sometimes people will be in Ruku for longer. You can continue to recite these in odd numbers, you know, so like five, seven, nine, or odd, as much as you want. And you, you can also. Um, add um, up other supplemental um, invocations or um, like prayers in there. Yeah. So after that, you would say, um, you will rise back up, standing up. You would say, Sami Allah Huliman Hamida. And then silently, you would um, you would say, Rabbana Walakal Hamd. Um, and you know, maybe if we're praying in the masjid, you might hear the mu'adhin um, say that, Rabbana uh, alhamd out loud. If it's like a, a very big masjid, uh, maybe, uh, I know like in Mecca, people do that, like when like the ranks are very far, so people can like hear, um, you yeah. know. Or like back, I heard back in the day, when there wasn't like microphones, they would have different, like every maybe 10, 15 rows, you'll have someone that would say, Rabbana alhamd, just to, um, you know, make sure everyone that hears it. And, and again, difference of opinion. Mm. Uh, some places, at least in Pakistan and India, you'll see everyone say. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like out loud. Yes, yeah. out loud. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah. It, it, it. It's not as prevalent anymore, but in a lot of places, over yeah. at least in Pakistan, I know, yeah. you will uh, hear people. W say. One of the most beautiful places when you hear them to say, but then a al hum. If you make Hajj or Umrah, and it'd be thousands of Muslims. Out there. And it's it's just very touching. Just that line alone, that they're not like a hum in every day, you know. Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alright. So once you say Rabban al Kalham, then we'll say Allahu Akbar again and go down to sujood. Um, and this is prostration or sajda. Um, and you guys could see, you know, on, on the, the book, I think everyone has the book. So you know, we will go down, our hands touch the ground first, and our knees, face, yeah, you know, and um, the parts that should be touching the the ground. Um, I've seen sometimes some people have their elbows on the ground, but like your your elbows should not touch the ground. It should just be your hands, your knees, your toes, um, and your nose and your forehead. Um, and you know, you you can you can have your hands out wide, but. You know, if you're praying in Salah, in congregation too, just be mindful too, like maybe not doing it like this. So, you know, just to have that um, uh, mannerisms, you know, with when, when you're praying next to other people. So maybe you don't have to have it as wide. When you say yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Who says seven parts, seven parts of your body should be? I'm being sarcastic. Mm -hmm. Who said seven parts? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean, sorry? No. The Prophet Salah Islam. Salah He tells us the seven mm -hmm. parts, yeah, and you can count them too, you know, like you said, yeah, your head, yeah, your hands, one, your knees, two, three, four, yeah. five, six. Yeah. I mean, seven. I guess, I guess your head, you that we would just yeah. count as one, four. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I included the nose and, and forehead, but yeah, that 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 that's um, and then yeah, so once you're in sajda or sujood, um, you'll say, Rabbana walakal hamd, and you'll recite that three times. Uh, you can recite it more in a uh, number no, of amounts. In Sajda, it's not Rabbi Nabi. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Subhana Rabbi Ala Ala. <laughs> sorry, I was like, <laughs> yeah, Subhana Rabbi Ala Ala. <laughs> Throw it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, you recite that three times. Um, and then, you know, there, there's a hadith that mentions, you know, the, the believers closest to their Lord and sajda. So um, it's, it's great to also, you know, add uh, um, other supplications as well um, while one is in this. And it's common, too, that people in their last prayer or, or the last um, unit of, yeah, it's a unit of prayer, last rakah, they, they were prolonged that sajda because you don't know that could be your last prayer so um, it's the mercy yeah. when you're in that position of sajda mm. it's, it's the mercy of Allah this is the closest that you can get that sajda she really that's the best way to go yeah alright and then w once we make sujood we, we say Rabbana alaika alhamd and then we get back up um, onto our knees, and like there's different ways of sitting, but you know we have um, you know this book covers it here. Um, I don't think I, I don't know if I need to go in depth about this the sitting yeah. aspect, but yeah, once you once you get back up, you know when you're sitting down, you say Rabbi Khfirli, uh, Rabbi Khfirli, you know Allah forgive me. Um, and you pause for a sec, and then go, go back down. Um, sometimes you'll see people rushing, you know, between <laughs> prayers like this. Like it shouldn't be like a like a, a quick exercise, you know, you should be thinking about what you're saying um, and try to have that that um, khushu or um, concentration, you know, while one is praying. So, you know, come back up, Rabbi Fridli, Rabbi Fridli, and then go back down again. Rabbana wa lakal hamd. I keep saying Rabbana wa Subhana Rabbi ala ala. I got it stuck in my head now. <laughs> so, what? Subhana Rabbi ala ala. Subhana Rabbi ala ala. So when when you're in when you're in sujood. So when you're or you. Subhana Rabbi ala ala. Hamdi is Subhana Rabbi. And then when you're making sujood, I mean ruku, you say Subhana Rabbi ala ala. I'm taught to do that. I'm just taught to say Subhana Rabbi. Subhana Rabbi ala ala. Three times sujood. Subhana Rabbi. Subhana Rabbi ala ala. Wa bihamdi. Or you can say Wa bihamdi. Yeah. Subhana Rabbi al ala. Right? Subhana Rabbi al ala. Or you can say Subhana Rabbi al ala. Wa bihamdihi. I mean, it's like, it's like an additional part, but. The exalted and then Wa bihamdihi, like the, the, the most praised. Uh, or the one that deserves praise, praiseworthy. Uh, I think uh, to, to make it clear, when you in the uh, ruku position, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then when you in suju, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You talking about when, when, you, when you in suju, when your head is on the ground, yeah. you saying, y'all, you don't say subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, you say subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa laka alhamd. Rabbana wa lakal hamd is one after you make, after you get up from ruku, you say silently, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Yeah, you can, you can revise, you know, if you have this book, you can like kind of like go through it again, um, inshallah. Any questions so far? Because this is like pretty in-depth kind of stuff. Like it's kind of a lot thrown at you guys in the last, uh, what is it? Uh, 30 minutes. 30 yeah. minutes, 35 yeah. minutes. Got it. How long do we, do we, do we want to? Yeah. What is that? When you, when you get up from Ruku. Um. But yes, yeah, it's almost nine o'clock now. Um, should we maybe stop here or can keep going? Uh, um, some people. Pardon, pardon me, I'm, I'm still here. I'm just at work, so that's why I'm muted. Okay, okay. okay. got it. Um, yeah, I mean, we can finish like the rakat. Yeah. Like how uh, that ends, and then uh, we can cover other stuff uh, next time. Um, and then I got some announcements. So okay, I'm all right, inshallah. Tesli. Yeah, you, you yeah. Went to the they haven't got a talk to name. Okay. Did you, oh, did, did you say Subhanallah Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. You, you, were ta- yeah. you were thinking about something. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. You can go. Uh, yeah. I, a lot does not mess with you if you're not sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just shake that over. Don't worry. Don't worry about it, shit. I'm the yeah. large yeah. merchant. Yeah. So, yeah. So, with, with each unit, um, we have one Ruku, is when I'm standing up and I. You know, t- like you know, touch my knees, and you know, like you were saying, um, your back should be straight. It will be one ruku, and then come back up. Um, um, uh, Sami Allah Hamida. Then you say Rabbana wa kalhamd silently, and you go to sujood. Come back up, Rabbi friendly, Rabbi friendly. And when I say come back up, you'll still be sitting. You wouldn't be coming back up, standing up. Then you go back down again. Um, so with each unit, there will be two such this then you will come back up you saw that <laughs> <laughs> there's just some balloons in there it's like oh, a, okay. it's, it's like a, apples like yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you make some hand gestures it does yeah, so. um, th- you make two, two um, such does and then you get back up um, and then for the second unit you will do the same thing again Fatiha and then we'll add um, some verses then we'll make um, Ruku come back up we'll make two sajdas and if it's for fajr which is only um two uh, units or two rakas then we would do the tashahud right um i re- recommend um people like like learning this the, the, the tashahud um does does anyone here yeah do, do people already know the tashahud here like on call I don't know no Arabic. I don't know the Arabic. Yeah, I know. I I'm, I know the good. Got it. Awesome. Yeah, and you know a lot of stuff we're covering. We're kind of like rushing through, so highly recommend yeah, you know getting getting with a teacher as well if you can, and then also looking at the translation um, of what you what, what we're saying because a lot of these things we're saying in in Arabic, but it you know, adds deeper meaning to and let you know what we're saying as well. It's like a good reminder for me as well. Yeah. Do um, you know what the Tasli? The Tasli? Yeah. Islam. Yeah. Islam. yeah. Did you go you win? No, we're doing the Tashahud oh, first sorry, and then we we'll do the Taslim. Yeah. Um so yeah, so we'll do the Tashahud, which is uh, um there's two parts of it. The first part, um, you must do at both times. Um so if you're in your first sitting, um you would do the Tashahud. Um, and then if it's a prayer that's only two rakats, then you would do, you would add this part. So I'm going to read the, the chashahud, the first part, and then I'm going to read the second part after. At-tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawat wa tayyibatu as-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatu as-salamu alayna wa la ibadu lillahi salihin ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ashadu وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ So, that will be the first part um, of the um, tashahud. And then if, if it's, you know, if you're about to make salam, if it's like the two rakats, then you add the second part with it. اللهم صلي it's, it's a salat al-Ibrahim. Um, اللهم صلي على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد um, and then you would do the taslim you know where you say السلام عليكم ورحمة الله and then you're on your right first and then you turn to your left and you say السلام عليكم ورحمة الله um, so that that will be the the jahud, um, and to make taslim. But if if a prayer is four units, after the first two units you do the tashahud, just that first part we mentioned, um, and then you get back up and you do two additional units, and then you do the tashahud, and then the second part the salatul ibrahim, then you'll make taslim, which is the the salam. Um, and for Maghrib, it's, a, it's three units. So we'll do two first, and then get back up, and then one after. 
the Jasha hood and then we'll make um, Taslim uh, um, but yeah the thing that that's that's pretty much um, it that I want all I wanted to go through um, any questions or like thoughts you guys want to add yeah, so I, I want to add a couple things. Um, one, uh, when you start your prayer, uh, as soon as you start your prayer and you say Allahu Akbar, that first uh, what you know we call takbi uh, ihram. So basically, after that, you should not talk, you should not look around, you should not do anything. You have to concentrate on your prayer, um, and you're supposed to like look down. Uh, where you're gonna be prostrating, where you're gonna be putting your head uh, down towards, so you should look uh, down in that direction. Um, the second thing I wanna say is, um, you, you know, we did throw a lot of this at you guys, but um, there's a great app that I always suggest. It was actually suggested to me uh, by one of the reavers within the last year, and it's called. Um, did it free? Sir, we're now I'm just gonna put it in the chat as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it's called the Namaz app. Uh, N A M A Z. Um, it's available on Android and on uh, what do you call that? Uh, Google Play. Google, yeah, G Google Play Store, and um, it literally uh, for store, every uh, app store <laughs> 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 for every uh, prayer, it literally walks you through it. Uh, and the third thing is, if you guys notice something. The whole prayer is in Arabic, so that's why, as, you know, uh, as as Brother Mubarak mentioned at the beginning, prayer is what defines a Muslim at the end of the day. That's the one act that you will be questioned for on the day of judgment. So, in you know, uh, uh, some brothers they take the shahada and they want to learn how to read Arabic and that kind of stuff, which is good. But before you can actually start reading it, you should just focus on concent or and concentrate on memorizing how to pray and just memorize the you know the the fur the, the stuff that is 100% required in your prayer right and when you're learning it is completely okay to use supplemental materials like next to you um if you're i mean they have uh these prayer rugs now too but they're like $100 $120 uh, cheapest i've seen is on eBay for like 60 bucks you can use those supplemental stuff to help you get to like you know that level of prayer that where you can pray you know um so i i would suggest you know getting that app first because you know it's a free app you're not spending any money and it literally walks you through for each prayer you can select and it will walk you through that yeah um and the last thing is when you're a revert when you're a new muslim try your best to come to the mosque so that way it will encourage you at least you'll get the actions down and you'll find somebody hopefully inshallah that can you know don't be afraid to like ask somebody it's like hey i just want to make sure i'm saying this correctly in my prayer or help me like help you know revise with them or whatever whatever it is yeah i mean i definitely echo that that part of like going go to the masjid because mm -hmm. um, there's just so much that we all just threw together um and it's very difficult to remember all of that at once but just getting the reps by going to the masjid, you would learn it like naturally. So, um, I think it's great advice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I, I do have a question. Go ahead. Yeah, what's up? Uh, what now I went for the, I think it's pronounced Ruku, yeah. when you said glory be to my Lord the Almighty. I know you said that you can say it multiple times, but is, is it like a mandatory amount of numbers you're supposed to say, like a minimum number? Yeah, you just say it like three times. Okay. Uh, I think the minimum is one time, but like, you know, rec mo like most of the time people just say it three times. Like, recommended is three times. Um, yeah. You, you could definitely do it longer. Um, Sujud, yeah. Sujud and Ruku. Yeah. And, and the other thing is, uh, what do you call the, the what do you call, um, so, I, I I don't know if one is. I thought it was always three. So I I'm thought not it was sure. always three. Too. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I've, I've learned like minute like I think, I think like okay, things we okay. learn is like okay yeah. this is like the right way but like 
basic minimum is like okay, one, one. But, okay. but it, it is highly highly recommended yeah. I would say then to do three yeah. um, and you could always do a lot more and if you caught it uh, he said it before Abdul, uh, brother Abdul Salam said it that you can do it any odd number of times and uh, yeah that's it and if you have any questions you know feel free to reach out Assalamu alaikum. 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 Assalamu alaikum.